In today's content, we're talking about individual graphics settings and how they affect FPS when restricted by the CPU. Whether you play it or not, Watch Dogs 2 presents an interesting opportunity to learn about the impact of CPU performance caused by graphics options. Watch Dogs 2 has proven to be both CPU and GPU intensive and is exciting strictly because it's one of the few titles where we're seeing real performance differences between 8-thread and quad-thread processors. Before getting to this, the coverage is brought to you by Catalyst Mints, a new energy consumable designed to provide focus and energy without the crashes or jitters of energy drinks. Catalyst Mints are a new product made in an allergen-free FDA-registered facility in the USA. Use code GAMERSNEXUS for 5% off at the link in the description below. This content piece revitalizes our graphics optimization guides, and this time, for the first time ever in our testing history, is specifically an optimization guide for CPUs. So even if you don't play Watch Dogs 2, this is still a good opportunity to learn about what types of graphics settings in a game impact CPU performance when you're bottlenecked on the CPU. So for this testing, we're obviously trying to isolate the CPU as the choke point, and that means we're using a GTX 1080 FTW, and we've stepped down the CPU a class to an i5-6600K, which Usually, you wouldn't expect much of a bottleneck to come out of a 6600K, but for this game, well, I should say with a, a big disclaimer there, unless you're trying to hit 144 or 120 hertz, then it matters a lot. But normally, 60 FPS, stuff like that, not a huge deal. With this game, Watch Dogs 2 really leverages the i7 CPUs. We see big performance gains by going to an i7, more so than just generationally moving between i5s, as shown in our i5-2500K revisit. So we're using a 6600K to create a bottleneck, and we found a few settings that are CPU dependent. Looking through the game's graphics options, we can use some basic deduction to make immediate assumptions as to what might matter most for the CPU. By understanding basic concepts of the graphics pipeline, we know, for instance, that geometry is most likely to involve the CPU heavily, and we also know that extra details will likely hurt CPU performance as the setting improves geometric complexity, mesh detail, things like that. Meanwhile, options like anti-aliasing and reflections are largely computed on the GPU side, so we don't care about those for this. And we know from experience and a basic understanding again of the pipeline that these shouldn't have any real impact on CPU performance. For test methodology, there are a lot of really specific things that we did for this, so it's all in the article linked in the description below. That was written by Patrick Lathan. He did the testing for this uh, particular benchmark and he's got a guide of how to change the settings things like that we'll go through it here but the methodology is all in the article so check that out we also have side-by-side -side screenshots for comparison between different graphics options but of course youtube compresses things so you might not be able to see the differences as well as in the article where we'll have some full resolution higher quality images to work with. Let's start with the presets all totaled. Again, running with just the 6600K and 1080 FTW, we're generally able to force a CPU bottleneck except under extreme conditions. This first chart shows the performance of strictly the presets. Even with low settings, we're not coming close to the 7700K's 114 FPS average when it's on high settings. So that's a big difference there. The extra four threads go a long way. This scaling shows CPU limitations for the most part as the 7700K allows for frame rates exceeding 100 FPS with 1080p high. The one exception is max settings, which enables HFTS and 100% extra detail. That combination means we're introducing somewhat of a GPU bottleneck as well, but the other options are primarily CPU bound. Unfortunately, the presets are a one size fits all model. And with this game, if you're bottlenecking on the CPU because an i5 is not quite enough to get full performance, you could do some manual tuning to get a mix of ultra, high, and medium settings that still looks pretty good. High is the lowest preset that doesn't sacrifice serious graphical quality with Watch Dogs 2, and there's an obvious difference in every texture between high and medium, reflections, texture resolution, and geometry all get tossed out the window once you're below high. Low is an excellent example of why this guide is necessary. The shadows are jagged, textures are blurry even directly next to the player, and everything appears flat and monochromatic, so we can improve by doing individual settings tuning. Extra detail starts us off. We've got screenshots that show detail scaling from 0 to 100% extra details. Again, these are in the article if you want to study. Extra detail has the biggest performance impact, and Ubisoft disables extra details in all of their graphics presets, which demonstrates that they know this is an issue. Here's the chart. At the highest setting, it decreased our frame rate by an impressive 24.8%, when using extra details enabled. We're falling up from 83 FPS average to 62 FPS average, and you could extrapolate that 50% extra detail likely plants you right in the middle. That'd be in the 70s for this particular setup. 
Extra detail controls the level of geometric complexity on all objects, even ones in the distance, which would normally be replaced with simple, easy to render shapes. The most visible changes in our screenshots anyway are the distance at which the bus lettering appears in the center lane of the road. Alongside more detailed buildings and shipping containers and things like that, you can also see that the cell phone tower in the background has some extra geometry in it, and that's really kind of impressive considering how far away it is. Most improvements are barely noticeable at the street level, like additional support struts on the solar panels to the left and the cell phone tower in the center. You just don't see that detail come through when you're actually on the ground rather than overlooking everything. We'd recommend leaving this setting completely off and relying instead on the geometry setting, which has a similar effect on building facades and draw distances, but isn't nearly as abusive. This next chart shows the geometry setting tuning. Geometry is set to high in our baseline benchmark, giving us room to turn it down to medium or low. Low offered us a 5.8-ish percent increase in performance over baseline, and Ultra offered about a 10% decrease. Big change there. This shows that geometry is another CPU bound setting. The difference between low and ultra geometry is much more visible than the difference between zero and 100% extra detail. So again, this is where you want to look for that tuning. 1080p with extra detail amped to 100% and 1080p with ultra geometry and 0% extra detail appears virtually identical, but the extra detail version performs far worse. So again, if you needed more proof, geometry is the way to go. If you're wondering why geometry has such an impact on CPU performance, it's because it's largely a matter of draw calls. The CPU must hand off each primitive and poly individually to the GPU, and that bogs down the render pipeline in an early stage of the processing for each frame. With DirectX 11, this is a bigger issue, though DirectX 12 hasn't really shown too much promise just yet because developers are still learning how to implement it. The next few tests all show much smaller impact on the CPU as they're more GPU limited conditions. Watch Dogs 2 has three reflection settings, if including water, and all of these should be handled by the GPU for the most part. The water setting affects water reflections and not physics, so again, that means it's really a negligible impact on the CPU. High or possibly ultra reflections we think are a must with any decent GPU as they dramatically improve the appearance of vehicles and windows. And if you have a decent GPU and your CPU is kind of weak, this is a place where you could turn up the settings, maybe even to ultra and not really lose any performance. Terrain settings were initially promising as a CPU limited option, but we found through testing that it only controls the textures of distant terrain and not the terrain geometry, at least not visibly. We didn't notice any significant visual changes, and it's unlikely that this setting will improve much of anything outside of potential VRAM consumption. Vegetation controls the render distance of more detailed trees, which are confusingly also affected by the extra detail setting, so that kind of does impact everything. Vegetation didn't have any significant impact within the bounds of our benchmark course, which contains a reasonable number of trees, but it did have a visual impact overall. The setting should be left at least on high unless performance is specifically dropping in forested areas. So we've got a limited selection of CPU binding options in Watch Dogs 2, but this sets the stage for learning more about when you can afford to tune specific settings like geometry rather than other settings like reflections. Because again, let's say you're running on kind of a mixed setup like we have, a GTX 1080 or something like that, some powerful GPU and an i5-6600K. Maybe not the most common setup, but if you have something like that, close to it anyway, then what you can see is that with the 6600K, there's this weird bottleneck that we can get an extra bit of performance out of the 1080. Even if you open a GPU monitoring tool like GPU-Z, you'll see that there's room for the 1080 to continue operating and, and pump out higher settings quality, but the CPU limits us. So what you could do in that scenario is again, tune down things like geometry, turn off extra detail, because that's a CPU thing, tune down geometry, and then increase things like reflections all the way up to ultra if you wanted to, texture detail, increase that to ultra as well, because they're not going to hit the CPU that much. So your options would more or less look like ultra, 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 ultra all the way down, except for maybe geometry, which you'd have on medium or something like that, or high, depending on how uh, high you want your frame rate to be. So that's all for this video. If you want to fund more things like this, as always, Patreon link in the post roll video. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. We have some goals there that are, a few have been reached, but some more coming up. And with that funding, we can do more of this testing and do individual graphics research for games. I think the next plan is to do something with Overwatch. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe for more. Links in the description below. I'll see you all next time.